Apple has rushed out the release of their new M4 chips, weirdly in the iPad Pros, rather than a device that most people would actually appreciate better performance, a laptop. Now, in all likelihood, the MacBook Pros will be the first laptops to be upgraded with the M4 series, since they literally just updated their MacBook Airs to M3 a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, today I'm going to share my thoughts on what we think will be coming with these new MacBook Pros with M4, and what we absolutely wish they'll change, but they probably won't. Let's start with the obvious. The MacBook Pros are going to be upgraded to the new M4 Pro and Max chips. To get a glimpse of what's coming, let's look at what we know from the move from M3 to M4. Single core performance has had a massive boost. In Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks, we are seeing up to 3,800 in single core performance. That is faster than any consumer processor, including the ones that are in high-end desktops. And keep in mind that the iPad, which it was tested on, has no fan to keep the processor cool. So we could see even higher scores in a MacBook Pro. And by the way, this jump in single core performance is clearly not just due to the increase in clock speeds. It is likely due to a significant CPU architecture redesign, especially as these chips are using a similar 3 nanometer TSMC manufacturing process. This is a great thing and something other CPU manufacturers seem to be struggling to achieve. In multi-core performance, the M4 chip in the iPad Pro slightly beats out the M3 Pro 11 core chip, which can be found in the current mid-range MacBook Pro 14. If you're wondering why it doesn't perform even better, the M4 chip has one less performance core than the M3 Pro chip that we just compared it to. Therefore, assuming the M4 Pro has the same number of performance cores, I would expect it to deliver a minimum of 25% more multi-core performance. For GPU performance, the early tests seem to imply that not much is going to change here. Look, I'm okay with this, given the huge boost in GPU performance that we did get with the move to the M3 series. Other than that, we will be getting significantly improved AI performance, almost to the level of Qualcomm's new Snapdragon X Elite processor. And we all know the marketing departments are going to have an absolute field day with this one. But let's talk real world for a second here. Many tasks that you do on your laptop will not actually see any extra benefit from all this additional single and multi-core performance. That's because the task you're working on is likely bottlenecked by something else. Case in point, I'm rendering a video on my M2 Max MacBook Pro 16. The CPU cores aren't maxed out. Adding more CPU cores or faster ones is not going to make this task any faster. The bottleneck is Apple's media engine, which leads me to my first wish. Double the number of media engines in the new MacBook Pros. These laptops are heavily used by video and photo editors. The images that they work with must be decoded, edited, and re-encoded. These tasks are accelerated using Apple's media engine. The M Pro range of chips all have one media engine, and the Max chips have two. That is why a Max-equipped MacBook Pro renders a video around twice as fast as one with a Pro chip. From M1 to M3, Apple has not changed this, and that is the main reason why rendering a video on a new M3 Max MacBook Pro isn't that much faster than rendering it on the older one with the M1 Max chip. Now, even if a laptop CPU is very fast, if it can't access data fast enough, then your performance will be bottlenecked. This issue, by the way, is far more pronounced for tasks that run super fast due to being hardware accelerated, like the one I just mentioned, or rendering a 3D scene using the GPU cores. Tasks that run fast, they need fast access to memory. With the launch of the M3 Pro and Max chips, Apple actually reduced the amount of memory bandwidth that's of most of their processors. This resulted in odd situations where the older M2 Pro can sometimes render a video faster than a newer MacBook Pro with the M3 Pro chip. For others, like programmers, this is less of an issue. If you're doing app dev, web dev, even most backend dev, you're probably relying on general CPU execution, and you just won't notice this as much, if at all. Just compare it to the memory speeds from competing processors from Intel and AMD. Apple's memory is actually very fast, even factoring in the lower memory bandwidth. But Apple's memory is unified, which means it is also shared by their GPU cores and the media engines. When we compare it to the speeds of Nvidia's memory with their dedicated GPUs, you can see that Apple is already lagging behind Nvidia's high-stand laptop GPUs. And keep in mind, this is on Nvidia's current 4000 series. It is highly likely that Apple's M4s will compete with Nvidia's 5000 series. So it's important that Apple closes the back door here and raises the memory bandwidth. I think this one is likely. I think Apple knows they screwed up here, and we've already seen a slight increase from 100 gigabits per second to 120 with the existing M4 chips. 
And talking about memory-related bottlenecks, this leads me to my next wish. It's not just how fast your processor can access data, it is whether there is enough memory to store it all. So can we please have 16 gig as the minimum memory in a MacBook Pro? In 2024, there is simply no excuse for a laptop with a starting price of $1,600 to come with only 8 gig that can't be upgraded. The macOS operating system alone uses upwards of 3 gigs, and as I said, the memory is unified, shared between the processor and graphics. Any graphical application will eat into that remaining memory. Without enough memory, many applications either won't run or will start to slow down. This just unnecessarily throttles these otherwise excellent processors that customers have paid good money for. Anyway. Apple should not be deceiving and misleading these customers by pretending that these laptops are built for performance but have such an obvious limitation. Unfortunately, although I hope Apple will change this, I feel it's profits before people when it comes to this company. But it's not only the memory. Please, one terabyte of storage minimum on the M4 Pro models and up. 512 gig is just not enough to store much data in 2024. Photos are large, videos are large. Many tasks that these laptops are fully capable of will require you to lug around an external storage drive. Who wants to do that? Not me. These laptops start at $2,000. There is no excuse to not have at least one terabyte of storage. Heck, Apple is selling a MacBook Pro 16 for $2,900 with only 512 gig. It is outrageous, and for the highest configs, it should be two terabytes minimum. I feel that just like the eight gig of memory issue, Apple is gonna ride this wave as long as they can, charging you top dollar for what is basically a necessary upgrade. And don't force us to buy a processor with things we don't need. With the M3 series, the only way to get the best CPU performance is to buy the top of the line Max chip. That comes with a bunch of extra GPU cores that many people don't need. With the M1 and M2 MacBook Pros, that just wasn't the case. You could buy the upper end Pro chip and you would get the best CPU performance. It's like buying the fastest CPU in a Windows PC and being forced to buy the highest end RTX 4090. At a minimum, I would like to see the base M4 Max chip include the highest number of CPU cores that you can get. That way it would decouple it from having to upgrade the GPU. Unfortunately, I also give this one a low chance of happening. Next, give us Thunderbolt 5. MacBooks currently support Thunderbolt 4 via the USB-C ports. Thunderbolt 5 is a huge step forward, up to 120 gigabits per second from the current 40. We've already seen some PC laptops included, such as the new Razer Blade 18. Upgrading to Thunderbolt 5 will unlock benefits like using multiple high resolution and or fast refresh rate displays with just one single cable. Apple was one of the pioneers of pushing USB-C and Thunderbolt back in 2016. But unfortunately, I give this one a low chance of happening too. Now, when it comes to accessing data fast, I'd definitely like to see Apple move from Wi-Fi 6E to Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 7 offers significantly higher bandwidth, and many MacBook buyers use their laptops for creative tasks, as I've said. Having faster access to data would be ideal, especially as MacBooks don't have an Ethernet port. And yes, no one has Wi-Fi 7 right now, but many MacBook buyers keep their laptops for five plus years, during which time they probably will. I'd say there is a chance of this one happening as it's pretty easy to implement. Let's talk about that notch. It needs to be shrunk. This is actually pretty important on macOS. That is because many applications run in the menu bar. As you open more of them, it fills up the menu bar. Eventually, those applications disappear behind the notch, making them harder to access. Reducing the notch size is a big deal, particularly on the 14 inch that has less screen real estate. I'd say there is a chance of this happening, given that they did reduce its size with the launch of the iPhone 13 two years ago. And on the notch, it's time they included Face ID. Face Unlock has been available on Windows laptops for a long time. You can argue the merits of Apple's approach versus Microsoft's in the comments below. But now that we're using biometric login for many websites and payments, it would be nice to not have to keep reaching for the fingerprint sensor. I'd say this one has a chance of happening too. And smooth the edges of the laptop. MacBook Pros have sharp edges. In some environments where you don't have proper support for your wrist, like on a plane, these edges will cut into you. I'd say there is a low chance of this one happening as it does involve manufacturing a new chassis, and we know they aren't going to want to spend that kind of money. They would prefer to just release a different color. Finally, what I believe is the number one wish for any buyer. User upgradable memory, storage, and battery. 
This one is never going to happen, but it would not be a wish list if I didn't mention it. All right, let's see what some of my friends think. Three things I want to see come to the M4 MacBook Pro. Number one, I want RAM to start at 16 gigabytes. Eight gigabytes in 2024 or whenever it's released is no longer acceptable. I want to see the SSD storage start at 512 because 256 is really starting to push it. But most importantly, I want to see the OLED display that's on the iPad Pro make its way to the MacBook Pro lineup because MIDI LED is fantastic, but that OLED display is incredible to look at. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. And what would I like to see from Apple other than bringing back a product named the Lisa? Yes, you young folks, Google that. I would like them to have an OLED display option for MacBook Pro. Probably they're not gonna do that in the air, obviously, but for the more expensive ones. And speaking of the more expensive ones, I would like to see 16 gigs of RAM standard across all the MacBook Pros. It already is for the 16 inch. Why not do it for the 14 inch? It is Pro, that's what's in the name, right? Now I'm gonna keep it lighter because we all know Apple, but we need at least 12 gigs of RAM. Eight is such a bottleneck. Now with that face ID, because that notch has been there for no use for a long time now. And personally, I'd love Wi-Fi 7 because that is just so much better even for other frequencies. And maybe I'll sneak one in faster media engines because they've mostly stayed the same ever since the M1. Well, that's all we got for you. What did you think of our wish list? Did we miss anything? And on this topic of creating products at large companies, I just launched a video on why companies make terrible products on our new business channel. It's something that if you've worked at a large company, you will probably relate to. So definitely head over there to check it out. All right, YouTuber shtick time. Smash the like button and get subscribed. It's something tiny that you can do to help us grow. And that means that we can make more videos for you. Plus, as I always say, it makes my dearest mother very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.